I'm sure you've seen the word SaaS get thrown around a lot lately, and you've seen millionaires created out of thin air from people that are no smarter than you. If you're wondering if this is something for you, then look no further because I'm gonna show you exactly how you can become a SaaS founder with limited time and cash flow. I started paying more attention to this space when players gave up everything just to build software such as Iman Ghazi, Sam Ovens, and even Alex Becker who sold his software for over $100 million. If you're new to SaaS, it stands for Software as a Service and it's basically software that makes our lives easier. As an example, Upwork is a software that helps us connect freelancers with business owners. SaaS is an industry that's here to stay, so if you haven't been paying attention, then I suggest you watch the rest of this video. And if you're not an insane coder, don't stress, there's a ton of no-code platforms that will let you build software, or you can do it like me and hire it out. I've worked on a good amount of SaaS projects, including lead generation, CRMs, and even community building platforms. So I'm pretty familiar with the process from A to Z. The first thing, and arguably the most important, is finding product market fit. What this means is you wanna pick something that is needed in the market and not just today, even five or even 10 years from now. So before researching a certain use case or a process, research the industry. You can do this very simply by using Google Trends. So let's do this together. As you can see, e-commerce is a growing industry, so let's build software there. Next, we wanna find innovative competitors in our space so we have an idea of what we're gonna build in other words, what the use case is gonna be for our software. You can look at existing companies that are established, but what I suggest is looking for startups, you could use Crunchbase for this. So go on crunchbase.com, go to the search bar and filter out e-commerce and SaaS. Also, don't forget to filter out the amount of employees. Usually what I like to do is filter anything under 10 employees. This way we can focus on early stage startups as well as early stage funded companies and figure out what their gaps are. So in order to find gaps, you can either sign up for the software or you can check their reviews, but I suggest doing both. To avoid getting overwhelmed, pick one use case at the start and then you could build around that. Since the industry we picked is e-commerce, I wanna build a software that tracks competitor store revenue. Now this is very useful to me as an e-commerce store owner so I know exactly what my competitor's revenue is and maybe I can take some of their strategies and use it for my brand as well. Now that you found the right product market fit and use case, the next thing you have to do is build it. Like I said before, for those of you that are watching that aren't coders, you can use no code platforms such as Bubble. It'll cost you just a couple hundred dollars and there's a slight learning curve compared to the massive learning curve as if you were to code it from scratch. But if you're someone like me and want to focus on what they're good at while getting it built out, you have a few options. You can either hire an employee or co-founder on LinkedIn or try using Y Combinator. A third option is hiring a done for you agency. If that's something that you want to do and have the cash for it, DM me on Instagram and I'll send you a few options. Just to let you know, there are a ton of agencies out there and with software especially, you have to make sure the project is finished and scalable. Once you find a way to build it, as you're building it, you have to always think about the customer journey. Consider how you're gonna be getting your customers and how to keep your customers for a long period of time. This goes way past how your front end looks, you have to actually focus on your back end. Think of how your software can become an essential piece of your customers' businesses. That way they'll become a lifelong customer. One way you could do this other than optimizing your main use case is by building other features or integrations such as with CRMs. But don't stress, before getting into building these additional features, you have to make sure you create your minimum viable product and it works very well. So once you have that MVP, let's get into marketing it. It's funny because even though I studied computer science in college, this has been my favorite part. There are plenty of ways you can market SaaS, but the easiest way I found it is to market it through trusted communities. Let me explain. You have to identify the exact person that's going to use your SaaS. In other words, you have to find your ideal customer profile. Make sure to ask questions like, what industry are they in? How much revenue do they make? How many employees do they have? And who do they talk to and what platform? Once you do all this, all you have to do is find out where those people hang out. For our example, there's a large community on Twitter, specifically Money Twitter. Money Twitter is a community that helps each other build businesses online. So this is where we're gonna focus our attention. So based on your ideal customer profile, you have to make an offer. The best way to do this is by asking people in the space what exactly they would pay for your SaaS. You should be answering a few questions. What is the main value proposition? In our case, it's to track competitor e-commerce stores. What is your value stack? This will be additional offerings to the software 
such as one-on-one -on -one customer support when somebody pays. And a third question you should ask is what is your price point? It could be a monthly or yearly subscription, or you could do something based off of credits. Remember that you can always change your pricing, so when you first start marketing your SaaS, make sure it's on the lower end just to get customers through the door. And some other branding questions are, what are we calling it? Make sure it's simple and self-explanatory. Another question is, what should the colors be? Well, if we're doing something related to e-commerce stores, maybe we could use the same color palette as Shopify, just because that's what our ICP is familiar with. Once you answer all these questions, you should start contacting people on the platform of your choice. In our case, it's Twitter, so we have to contact people with large audiences. And the reason for this is because what we're gonna be doing is tapping into their communities and getting them to affiliate our software. The way I would structure these deals at the start is by giving the affiliates a percentage of lifetime value as well as a possible payment upfront, depending on how big their audience is. As an example, I'd give our affiliate 40% lifetime revenue plus $100 for every auto DM or thread that they post with our affiliate link in there. Now, once people click that link, they'll be taken to your homepage make sure you have some sort of irresistible offer on there. In my case, I would give people a seven day free trial so there is no reason that they shouldn't use the software. This is a pretty irresistible offer for the customer because they have nothing to lose by signing up. Plus you get their email information so you could retarget them and sell them on something later. The next question is how do we scale? The most profitable way to scale is through word of mouth. This means that before you start pushing like crazy, listen to your customer feedback and reinvest back into the platform to make it better. You can do this by creating useful features such as CRM integrations so your clients' businesses can be more automated. Like I said before, make sure the software is irreplaceable to your customer's business. But before making any assumptions on what the features should be, all you gotta do is ask your customers. After you optimize your software, the next step for you is to vertically scale your affiliate system. In our case, it's usually going on Instagram and YouTube. And to optimize your customer journey even further, make sure that you take note of your KPIs every single month. Your main KPIs is gonna be your customer satisfaction score, which is how happy your customers are. The next is gonna be your retention rate, which is how long somebody stays subscribed. And the third is gonna be your customer lifetime value, which is how much money each customer spends with you. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you have any suggestions for the next videos or questions, put them in the comments. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.